Logan's Run by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. Nine, part two. Okay. Logan didn't want to get on the table. It could carve and change him, make him into another man. Holly 3, fa 13, fastened down his ankles and wrists, then attached the sensors. The table rippled, accepted his weight, positioned him. I like dark hair, said Holly, leaning close to him. The blue spark danced in the depth of her eyes. Have him give you dark hair. Doc returned to his patient. Got anything special in mind, he asked. Bone structure like yours, I could give you most anything. That's your decision, snapped Logan. Just get it over with. Look, runner, said Doc, his voice hard. Just you wheeze down. I tell you where to go, how to go, and when to go. You runners are always in a hurry, always trying to rush me. You don't go nowhere without Doc. I handle this end of things. Can't use the next key anyhow till 940. Got plenty of time for the new you. Doc danced his fingers over the control board as he studied Logan's face. We can widen those cheekbones for a start. The table began to hum as a pair of thin silver probes separated themselves from the overhead cluster and poised above Logan. A stun needle lowered towards the fa his face. A virosaw began to keen. Abruptly, all motion ceased. The keening died. An alarm buzzed insistently. Doc's eyes narrowed. Something's wrong. We've got metal on the table. You empty your pockets? Logan nodded. Doc looked at him suspiciously. Something ain't right. He came out from behind the console, stood over Logan. The slight bulge of the gun was visible in Logan's waist. Doc pulled open his shirt, bearing the weapon. Lock the door, Holly. What is it? she asked, moving forward. Doc shoved her back. Gun, he said. We've got a Sandman. What'll we do? I'm thinking, Doc glared at Logan, helpless on the table. You've seen my hand, said Logan. I'm on last day. Does it figure I'd still be working for DS? You got a gun, said Doc. Only DS men got guns. I'm not the first Sandman to run. Why should I take a chance, said Doc, moving back to the console. I'm scrambling the table. You'll get more than a new face, Sandman. Logan lunged against the straps, but they held fast. What will it do to him? asked Holly. The blue light gleamed in her eyes. Anything. It's on his own. The table hummed to life. I want to watch, said Holly, flushing. Doc chuckled. Logan looked up, sweating, into the moving cluster of pointed, bladed objects suspended above him. A stun needle lanced into his cheek, and the left side of his face went dead. A pair of metal clamps bit into his right leg below the knee. A surgical scalpel slit his shirt from shoulder to waist, leaving a thread of blood in its wake. A sponge dipped to wipe the blood neatly away. Desperately, Logan sucked in his belly and tried to flatten himself into the table. Beside him, Holly was breathing fast. A wide, serrated blade shifted its downward sweep, moved three inches to the right, and hovered. A pair of nerve scissors snipped viciously at empty air, lowered abruptly, and sliced through the strap that confined Logan's right arm. Doc took a shock step back as Logan clawed the gun free. A rain of silver knives dropped towards him, and he hacked at them with the barrel. They snapped like icicles. Logan attempted to swing the gun in Doc's direction. Kill the table. Lizard quick, Doc was out the door, the girl behind him. The table pumped a cooling alcohol spray on Logan's chest as he clumsily freed his other wrist. Tiny lubricated gears inside the machine's housing slid into new positions. Logan sprawled the upper part of his body off the bed and hit the leg releases. He rolled from the table as it mindlessly attacked its own vitals. It died, shrieking, as sparks showered from the gutted machine. Logan considered his next move. Without another punch key, which Doc apparently was to supply, his run was over. And it wouldn't take a mouth like Doc long to spread word. Sandman. The trail would end before it began. He kicked the back door open and found himself in a dank warren of intersecting hallways. The moaning cry of the fire galleys drifted up to him, mixed with the baked dessert smell of dream dust from the hallucin mills. Something iced out of the gray half-darkness, knocking the gun from his grasp. A glacier numbness chilled his arm from hand to elbow. Popsicle, spelled with a C-K there. Logan spun into a fighting crouch to face dim, the dim white figure coming at him with the refrigerated police bill he held at waist level. Doc, in for the kill. One blow to the chest and Logan's body would be a sea of ice crystals, freezing his hard action, stopping the breath in his throat. The gun lay on the floor, rhymed with frost. He kept his eyes locked on the short, smoke-colored stick in Doc's practice hand. The popsicle slashed air as Doc lunged past him. 
Logan twisted and fell to one knee in the classic Omnite attack position. His left elbow drove into Doc's groin. With a soundless choked scream, Doc slammed against the wall, bouncing off into Logan's knee, which caught him with a killing spinal blow. Logan swore bitterly, stripping the dead man's pockets. I should have handled this without killing, he thought. Now where's the next key? Has the girl got it? And where is she? Probably hidden somewhere in the arcade labyrinth. Logan retrieved the moist gun, straightening to a sound in the next room. He moved carefully to the door, easing it open. Holly was inside, against the far wall, a medical knife poised at her breast. Her terror-glazed eyes were fixed on the gun. As Logan advanced towards her, she drove the blade into her chest. The world ended abruptly for Holly 13. Logan put away his weapon. Doyle? Doyle, is that you? A drugged voice. Logan stepped through an alum mesh curtain. The cramped room reeked of anesthetic. A dark-haired girl, nude to the waist, was rising groggily from a pneumocot. Num she blinked dreamily at Logan. It's me, Jessica, she said. Her fingers tentatively explored the new planes of her face. A runner, thought Logan. Her hand is blinking. But why does she think I'm Doyle? And did she get the key? Do you have a punch key, he asked. Doyle, you don't even look like my brother anymore. You don't even sound the same. They've changed us. So that was it. The girl was Doyle's sister. He must have told her to meet him here. Listen, said Logan. Do you have the next key? She was fully awake now, slipping into her blouse. He saw her remove a silver object from one pocket. Logan took it from her. A maze key. Did Doc give you any instructions? Yes, he told me. Us. To use a branch tunnel under Arcade. I know where it is. All right then, let's go. He followed her into a slideway. They plunged down into the jeweled darkness. At the off-ramp, he took her hand. They ran along the maze platform. The maze. A million miles of tunnel, a veining of expressways serving the continents, interlinking Chicago with New York, Detroit with New Alaska, London with Lower Australia. A multitude of black steel beetles burrowing the subterranean depths at fantastic speeds. Logan stabbed the maze key into a callbox at the edge of the platform. A distant brass humming along the tunnels, a rocketing rush of deep earth winds. The maze car blazed out of darkness and socked into the boarding slot. They climbed in. The hatch slid closed. The seats locked. Destination? asked the car. Jessica said, Sanctuary. The maze surged into fluid motion. As the beetle rushed, Logan's thought rushed with it. Sanctuary. It seemed too easy. You got into a maze car and said a word, and the obedient piece of machinery carried you. Where? And the girl, Jessica. How would you deal with her? <sighs> the car slowed hissed to a stop. The hatch opened. Jessica didn't move. They can change the color of a man's eyes, but they can't change the man inside. You're not my brother. He's dead, Logan told her. The girl's mouth tightened. You killed him. No, but I saw him die. He gave me his key. He wanted me to have it. For a moment, her face was still, then she began to sob quietly. What do you say? How do you say I'm sorry? A sandman doesn't feel sorry. He does what he has to. Look, he said, your brother's dead and we're alive. And if we want to stay alive, we'll have to keep moving. It's just that simple. Exit, please, said the car. They stepped out and the machine whipped away. The maze platform was lifeless. Dusty yellow sunlight speared down from a jagged hole in the tunnel ceiling. Loose metal tiles lay in disordered heaps where they had sloughed from the walls. Exposed masonry jutted through the cracked, anodized flooring. On the rusting section of tunnel wall, a weathered poster clung, edges peeling. On it, a running silhouette was overprinted with harsh letters. Shame. Directly under this, a vandal had chalked, Runners stink! A bent sign angled over the platform. Cathedral. And what now? Logan asked himself. Is this sanctuary? A shorted out section of city swarming with renegade cubs? Listen, Jess warned. A distant singing. A faint rising and falling refrain echoing from an upper level. Logan ducked Jess into a wedge of shadow. They waited. Finally. Sandman, Sandman, leave my door. Don't come back here anymore. A high, childish treble coming closer. Cubs, said Logan. His eyes strained the darkness. Louder. Now I lay me down to pray 
Sandman, Sandman, stay away. A small figure in a tattered blue garment walked into the circle of sun on the platform. A little girl of five. She was dragging something behind her. The child's face was grimed and hair tangled. Her scabbed legs were thin. She wore no shoes. She stopped singing. Don't be afraid, she said. I'm Mary Mary too. Logan stepped from the shadow. What are you doing here? Oh, he told me to meet you. Who did? The little girl's eyes saucered. Why, the old, old man, of course. Jessica gripped the sh child's shoulder. What old, old man? His hair is black and white, all mixed together, she told him. And he has deep places in his face, and he looks so wise. He's the oldest man in the world. Ballard! The little girl took a silver key from a torn pocket. He told me to give you this. Logan palmed the key. Do we use it now? This many, she said solemnly, raising her tiny hand, all ten fingers spread. In the center of her right palm, a yellow flower glowed softly. Ten o'clock, said Jess. Logan checked a wall cron above them. Twelve minutes. <sighs> Jessica looked deeply into the waif's eyes. Where do you live, Mary Mary? She smiled. Here, she said. Why aren't you in a nursery? nursery? I'm very smart, said Mary Mary. But don't you get hungry? You can catch things to eat. She opened the frayed cloth bag at her feet and proudly held out an old-fashioned rat trap. Jessica paled. I never go upstairs, continued Mary Mary. The bad people are there and they chase you. Goodbye now. You're a nice old lady. The child looked disdainfully at Logan and walked off into the tunnels. I don't think she likes me, he said. She shouldn't be here, said Jess, alone in a place like this. She should be in a nursery with other children. She seems to be self-sufficient. A nursery would protect her. Has it protected you? Of course. No child under seven belongs on her own. I was happy in the nursery. Jess sat down on the platform edge with Logan. No, no, I wasn't happy. Her voice trembled. I accepted everything then, without questioning. But I was never happy there. Logan let the girl talk. He wanted to know more about her. Wanted to understand her. Why should every child be taken from its parents at birth? Why should a brother and sister be separated for seven years? She studied Logan's face. When did you begin to doubt, to question sleep? I'd like to know. I can't recall just when. I'd heard the stories, of course. Of Ballard? Yes, and the rest of it. About the sanctuary line. Oh, how I wanted to believe those stories when I first heard them as a little girl. Her eyes grew hard again. Do you ever wonder what your mother was like? Who she was? What she felt? How she looked? Do you think she'd be ashamed of what you've become? She may have been a runner, too, said Logan evasively. I'll never know what she was. Jess frowned angrily. I think you should. I think children should know their mothers and be loved by them. Little Mary Mary should have a mother to love her. A machine can never love you. Only people can love people. Where did you work before you ran? He asked her. I was a fashion tech at Life Leather Trim. Three hours a day, three days a week. I hated it. Then why did you stay there? Because it was a job. What can, what can anyone really work at? You can paint or write poetry or go on a pair-up. You can glass dance or firewalk in the arcades. Her voice was scornful. You can breed roses or collect stones or compose for the tridims. But there's no meaning to any of it. I just... A scream from the tunnels. That was Mary Mary. Jess lunged forward, but Logan restrained her. Wait, he said. Here she comes. The child ran out of the darkness into Jessica's arms. The bad people. Bad, bad, bad. A howling group of Cub Scouts burst from the tunnel mouth to surround them. A strutting, feral-faced 13-year-old headed the pack. From the waist up, he was dressed in the blood-stained uniform of a DS man. Below the ripped black tunic, he wore sweat-darkened skin tights. Here now and look what Charmin Billy led you to, he smirked. The little rat trapper and two stinking runners. Mary Mary stomped her foot. You go on away, she demanded. This is my place. Go back upstairs. Charming Billy ignored her. Going to have us a time, we are. Logan measured the pack with his eyes. He could summon the car in another five minutes. How do you buy five minutes? He'd take out the blocky cub up to his right first, then go for Charming Billy if nothing else worked. He eased Jess and the child behind him. Logan looked at Billy. I feel sorry for you, boy. Confusion. 
the pack watched their leader. For me, better feel sorry for yourself, runner. No, for you, Billy. How old are you? Billy's eyes slid it. He didn't reply. Twelve? Thirteen? Now me, I'm as old as you can get. Logan slowly exposed his blinking time flower. And you, your days are running out. How long can you last, Billy? One minute gone. Two years? A year? Six months? He pointed to the blue flower glowing in Billy's palm. What happens when you go red? Got me a Sandman once, I did. They said I'd never get him, but I cut him up good, I did. Make the rules as I go. Cubs do what I say. Always have. Always will. I got Cathedral, and I'll never let go. No Cubs at 14, Billy. Ever hear of a cub with a red flower? You'll leave Cathedral then, Billy, when you're on red, because they won't let an adult stay here, the young ones. They'll gut-rip you if you stay, so you'll cross the river, and then almost before you know it, Billy, you're 21 and your hand is blinking, and you'll die like a sheep. Two minutes gone. Not me, I won't, Billy shouted. I'll run, snapped Logan. Isn't that just what you do? Run as I'm running, as she's running? Shut up. Shut your damn mouth. I ain't no stinking runner. We're the same kind, Billy. You're just like us. Help us, Billy. Don't fight us. The blocky cub cut in. Let him suck muscle. That'll shut his mouth. Let us watch him shake himself to death. The anger and frustration drained from charming Billy. He smiled. Logan tensed. The talking was done. Three minutes gone. Drum pads materialized. The cub squeezed the pads, inhaled the muscle. They shimmered into kaleidoscopic blurs, into weaving color patterns. Here, there, they were everywhere. Logan fell back into a fighting crouch, but before he could strike a blow, he was caught, dragged, and slammed against the wall. Screaming, Mary Mary broke from Jessica and ran off down the tunnels. A staccato b burst of words, the blocky club's voice. Give him some muscle. Shake him to death. Kill him. A drug, pants drug pad danced in the air in front of Logan's face. Four minutes gone. Logan held his breath. The fumes enveloped him. If he breathed, he felt the gun pressing into his thigh. The gun. Despite revealing himself to Jess, he'd have to use the gun. He wrenched his arms loose, dropped to the floor, rolled free of the weaving shapes, drew, and fired. The nitro charge exploded into the pack. Fragmented bodies littered the platform. Five minutes. Logan quickly pocketed a drug pad and key punched the call box. Jess stared at him with revulsion. Sandman. You're a Sandman. A maze car swooped out of the depths. In. Jessica hesitated. Logan pushed the girl inside, leaped after her. Before the hatch could engage, a black shimmer filled the space. The shimmer solidified into Charming Billy. He was headless. The hatch shut. The maze car slammed into the night. And that is the end of that chapter. We'll pick up tomorrow.